Okay, this is a Mr. Ingman question. I know you guys had lots of time to work on this stuff, right? So again, I think your first step is to take whatever data set you've got and order it from smallest to largest. Okay, this just represents a test test marks or whatever. Um, okay, and then you would order it from smallest to largest, and then you could start doing your mean, median, and mode, right? So, which of those three is the easiest? Do you think? Like, check one off right away. Opal, what do you think? Um, mode. I would just I, mode. And what is mode? Opal. Yeah, so it's the one it's the one that occurs the most. Okay, so if I look at that list, I'm going through there and I see oh there's 368s and uh, oh, 254s. So this, the 68 is going to be my mode. Okay, start with that one. That's the momentum. Okay, that's a freebie. The mode is 68. Okay, and then we can say okay, um, you do median next. I suppose that might be the next easiest because you're just going to find the middle, right? So you're going to say, okay, how many entries are there? There should be, oh, well, that's interesting. There's first number is 22. There's 22 entries, okay? So 22 entries, that means like I'm not going to find the middle of 22. It's going to be like an 11 and 11 sort of situation, right? And so you're going to have to like count 11 from either side, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Here's the 11. And that must mean that counting 11 from the other side, we're going to see that. Okay. So there's your two middle entries. And then the true median of the data set is the middle of those two. Okay. So we know to find the middle of something. If these two numbers, I think right off the bat, you could identify that 67 and a half is right in the middle of those two. That's not too bad. But what happens if you have two numbers that it's not necessarily easy? How would you find the middle? You could go 67 plus 68 divide by 2. That'll tell you the middle. Okay? So just in case you get something like, I don't know, uh, 54 and 63, and you want to find the middle of those two things. So you can just add them together and divide by 2. Okay? So that'll give you 67 and a half. So there's, there's your median for this data set. Okay? And then the, probably the most time consuming, which is why I've left it to the end, is finding the actual average or the mean. Right? So the mean is going to be like the sum. So sum the data set and divide by how many of them there are there, how many entries, 22. Okay, so it turns out when I added this all together, I got 1409. And then when I did the divide that by 2, you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong. Divide that by 2, you should get uh, 64.0. Is that all right? Any questions of that? I think the hardest thing with that is just remembering which one does what. Okay, and start mode is like kind of an odd one. That's just kind of like if you can narrow that off right out of the bat, count the one that has appears the most. And then <clears throat> just know mean is average, right? That's what that means. And then median by default is just the middle. Okay. Any questions? And then one of the other things he did with Mr. Ringman was uh, come up with a stem and leaf plot. Okay? And remember stems, like if I, you're basically breaking numbers into two pieces, right? Stems being the first number and then the leaf being the second number. Okay, so for 22, your stem is going to be 2 and then the leaf is going to be 2. Okay, and then there's no more entries in the 20s, so you're good with that column. Next one. Okay, so then you're going to go three. Okay, well, I've got a couple entries in the 30s. So we're going to have 34 and, oh, 35. But that's it. We're good. Okay, now we're into the 40s. Next stem is going to be four, and we're going to have 43, eight. Okay, we're good. Five. We're going to have a four, a four, a five, a seven. And then we're good. Okay. Uh, 60s. 5, 7, 8, 8, 8. That's it. Okay, it's kind of nice to have everything nice and in order because you know you're not going to miss any either. 
So it's very, when we do this on the test, just take your time in doing this. I think this is like, if you miss an entry, you're gonna get the wrong values. So just when I ask you to order something or when I just throw a data set at you, just take your time on that first initial, like writing them from least to greatest, okay? Because that's, you can imagine, if you miss an entry there, all your work's gonna be wrong, right? Uh, seven, three, six, eight, that's it. Oh, there's one I didn't check. You guys tell me if you did this. I have to check this with Ms. Ferrani. I never put any thought into this. Um, 84, 7, 93. Okay, what about the 100? What do you guys do for the 100? So maybe think. I don't think it's a big deal, but Opal? I think so as well. I think so as well. A 10 and a 0. That one made me think, because in the, in the context, right? This is, I don't know if you can go much higher. That one made me think. Allie? What would you do for like 172? I think you, 172. 172. 172. 100, so, sorry, say that again, Allie? What would you do for like 117? So if we had 117, I would say, okay, well, the, the stem would be 11, and then uh, the leaf would be 7. So i do something like this. Is that okay, Aaron? Yeah? Can I have a question? Yes? Uh, is there like a preferred amount of decimals you'd like us to round to for standards? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I have to find that out. That's something I'm like, I'm as new to this IB program as you guys are. But I have some experience in an IB class I'm teaching it. This is my first like, pre, like IB class that I'm teaching, right? So there are some things that uh, I think that's one of those, that's, if I had to take a guess, Aaron, I would say like when you, um, when you go through science, probably in pre-IB science or IB science, you're going to talk about significant figures. Significant figures dictate, like, you can't be any more accurate than the information that's been provided to you in the question. Does that make sense? So, for instance, like, I couldn't have, like, if, I, if, a, if, if information in a question said, like, um, the distance from here to, like, the front of the school is 30.5 meters and you couldn't give me an answer that was like I just 40 point five two three four does that make sense you can't be any more accurate than the information that's given to you in the question that's basically the, the premise of significant figures so I suppose like as you go through all of this like keep that in mind you can't be any more accurate than what's given to you is that all right so I don't have a great answer for that Aaron. probably depends on the situation and the actual, the way the numbers work out, right? And the answer. Okay, does anybody have any questions with that one? That's relatively straightforward, I don't think that's too bad. Where I think maybe we do, would have some questions is maybe the box and whisker plot, if we had any, okay? Now again, I, I'll probably put all this on the test as well, I'll just so you don't have to memorize it. Um, just what the inner quartile range is, uh, what a low outlier by definition is, and what a high outlier by definition is. Okay, but uh, you're still required to figure out what Q3 and Q1 are. The same way you would have been required to find what Q2 was. Okay, so using the data set on the other page, right? That's what we're talking about here. Um, I want to find what uh, Q3 is and what Q1 is. Okay, and remember, I think this was a little bit of an issue if you haven't, like I hadn't done this in a while. And this is one of the things that maybe stumped me a little bit. When we talk about the, we want like the, like Q3 is like the upper, like the 70, whatever, there's the, the upper quartile, right? And so we're splitting the, the upper half of the data in half. Okay, but it has to include the two in the middle that from the Q2. That was one of the things that caught me as Mr. Ingman explained that, right? So you're going back to your data set and you're breaking it into you're basically drawing Q2 on, and now you have two halves, and you go find the middle of those two other halves. Does that make sense? So Q3 is going to be the upper half, and Q1 is going to be the lower half. So now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 entries, which is an odd, which is nice because now you can find the middle. So you're going to have five entries on either side of the number in the middle, or you're a Q1 entry, right? So you know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 
one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so 54 is my Q1, okay? Does anybody have any questions with that? So it's important to remember it's the whole data set you're breaking like like the upper half and the like the upper half and lower half into uh, quarters. You're breaking the whole data set into quarters. I suppose is the best way to explain that. Okay, and so Q3 you should expect to be if we look at it uh, same thing one two three four five six and three one two three four five. Okay, so 78 would be the upper quartile. Okay. And then because we know we need it, I would find the like the inner quartile range, like how far apart are those middle, the middle of the data, upper and lower quartiles, right? Well, IQR is going to equal Q3, so 78, take away 54, which should be 24. Okay, and then just to check, I also put the low outlier, just so that you guys can see whether or not you're going to have any outliers. You're going to have the low outlier to be um, Q1, which is 54, take away uh, 1.5 times 24, which you'll find to be, when you do this, 18. So there's your, anything lower than 18 is going to be an outlier to the data set. Okay, and then your uh, high outlier is going to be, um, 78 plus 1.5 times 24 and you'll find that to be 114 okay so it looks like based on the data everything within our data set is like a nothing's an outlier okay it all falls within the, the normal ranges okay okay now I saw a whole bunch of people drawing all sorts of stuff I think with Mr. Ingman, we had a few box and whisker plots. I think that's where some of the, they got a little bit, uh, not confusing, just there was more of them on the actual um, grid. For this one, you know, I think you could just draw one grid, like a two dimensional representation or one dimensional, I suppose even. That's uh, your marks from zero to 100, break that in half, to 50, break it in half again to 25, and break this upper half to 75. Call this marks in percent. Okay, and then just draw on your quartiles. So I'd start with the boxes and then put the whiskers on. Okay, so I go find your actual median. Remember, this is kind of a plotting of the median. So go find the median, which you already have, Q2. Q2 was 64. Oh, no, sorry. 67 and a half. It's Q2. Okay, so go plot 67 and a half wherever you think it is. It's probably somewhere in here. Okay, you call that Q2. And then plot your other two quartiles. 54 is probably somewhere in here, closer to 50. And Q3. Three is 70, what do we say it was? 78. Here you can connect these up. Okay. That takes care of the boxes part. And what's the last part? We gotta draw the whiskers on, right? The whiskers are your high and low entry for the data set. So you have 100 in your data set, which means you're gonna go all the way up to here. There's one whisker, okay? And then you have a 22 in your data set, which is gonna be down here somewhere. Here's your other whisker, okay? No outliers, all right? You call that Q1 and Q3 if you wanted. Okay, any questions?